Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. We're in Proverbs chapter 10, and we take the turn in the Proverbs. Um, Similar titles, but very different writings. So Proverbs 1 through 9 um, of Proverbs of Solomon, uh, but they're more narrative. They're more uh, poems, longer poems, and being able to actually put us into that place, right, of, uh, of uh, encountering us with wisdom um, and folly of righteousness um, and unrighteousness of life and death. And so it kind of put these narratives before us. Uh, what we get to see now, it is a turn in Proverbs chapter 10 of short proverbial sayings, um, Proverbs of Solomon. And uh, I have it in my footnote. I just want to bring that forth to you. I think it's uh, incredible how it's laid out. Um, how it's laid out is uh, Solomon, uh, the word, the name Solomon in, in the Hebrew. If you put a numerical value to the consonants of Solomon in Hebrew, the number is 375. We have now proverbial sayings from chapter 10 all the way through chapter 22, verse 16, and there's 375 Proverbs. Proverbs of Solomon, numerical value of Solomon, the name in Hebrew is 375. 375 Proverbs from chapter 10 through chapter 22 verse 16. I think it's very linked together. I, be, I, I always love that the beauty of the divine order uh, that God has put this forward. Now, how does that structure work? How does that look um, as these short sayings? Well, they're actually meant to have these short sayings to be able to actually just meditate on those sayings piece by piece. And so there's a little bit of homework for you in these Proverbs. It's not necessarily as we have this, you know, 10 minute video um, that you're really going to get the understanding and all the information of each Proverb, but it's, it's meant throughout the day. Um, it's meant throughout the, uh, the time that you're walking through each of these chapters to spend a little bit of time, further time on each Proverb. Now, some just kind of give it to you and just give you the understanding and some uh, really kind of inspire a deeper walk. We're going to take these piece by piece, but uh, there is an overarching uh, manner to be able to actually see these Proverbs, um, kind of a a three-step way way, um, to see Proverbs, and that is Proverbs have three concepts. Number one, they are actually meant to bring about knowledge, as we have wisdom to knowledge. Then from that knowledge of the Lord, right, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the the awe of the Lord, the character of God that you get encountered with. Uh, When you have that knowledge of that, you get actually step forth with discipline. And these Proverbs are going to put forth discipline. Chapter 10 is this. It encounters us uh, right away uh, with um, a wise son, once again, uh, but it's going to introduce wisdom and righteousness in these first five verses. And then from these first five verses, then we get to actually uh, see the discipline, the knowledge of wisdom and righteousness. Then we get to see the discipline in 6 through 23 uh, about the use of the mouth. And so there are all these proverbs that are going to be structured together of how you use your mouth um, for good, um, out of the knowledge of knowing the Lord, the discipline of the mouth and then we actually get to see uh, the third part so number one number two knowledge and then discipline and then number three is actually um, to have that growth in wisdom and so uh, these proverbs all have an aim right um, declaring the Lord knowledge of the Lord um, walking with us in discipline and the walk of faith of wisdom and righteousness um, but then growing in that wisdom as well. So you'll see that um, throughout this time of being able to walk together in these Proverbs of Solomon. Chapter 10. Quite a few in chapter 10, so we'll take them. I'm just going to pause after each proverb so you can kind of take that in and meditate on that. Um, And if I need to have a little excursus, I'll do a quick excursus of each one. Chapter 10, verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son brings joy to his father, but a foolish son, grief to his mother. Just a reminder, verses 1 through 5, or is this introduction to wisdom and righteousness. So it's wise to bring joy to your father, joy to your family, rather than grief to your family. Verse 2, ill-gotten treasures are of no value, but righteousness delivers 
from death. The things of this world have really no value in the kingdom of God, but righteousness does. The Lord does not let the righteous go hungry, but he thwarts the craving of the wicked. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. You're going to see this throughout the Proverbs, really speaking towards um, uh, the wisdom of diligence, uh, the wisdom of work, um, rather than stepping back and, as it says, lazy or apathetic. Um, kind of the wisdom, folly, reality there on those both sides. Verse 5, he who gathers crops in summer is a wise son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. And now we get to go from 6 uh, through 23, um, as we get to have uh, here, we get to see the discipline, the Proverbs towards the use of the mouth. So uh, these go a little bit quicker here. It says, uh, blessings crown the head of the righteous, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. The memory of the righteous will be a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. The wise in heart accept commands, but a chattering fool comes to ruin. The man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found out. He who winks maliciously causes grief, and a chattering fool comes to ruin. That keeps kind of repeating that, um, being able to say, be careful how quick you are to talk rather than listen. Verse 11, the mouth of, a righteous, of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all things. <clears throat> Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers over all wrongs. Wisdom is found on the lips of the discerning, but a rod is for the back of him who lacks judgment. It's going to be need to be disciplined. Wise men store up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool invites ruin. The wealth of the rich is their fortified city, but poverty is the ruin of the poor. The wages of the righteous bring them life, but the income of the wicked brings them punishment. He who heeds discipline shows the way to life, but whoever ignores correction leads others astray. He who conceals his hatred has lying lips, and whoever spreads slander is a fool. When words are many, sin is not absent, but he who holds his tongue is wise. The tongue of the righteous is choice silver, but the heart of the wicked is of little value. The lips of the righteous nourish many, but fools die for lack of judgment. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, and he adds no trouble to it. A fool finds pleasure in evil conduct, but a man of understanding delights in wisdom. And now we get to see uh, 24 through 32, just the contrast of uh, righteousness and wisdom, and as we get to see here, the wicked, the righteous and the wicked. Verse 24, what the wicked dreads will overtake him, what the righteous desire will be granted. Provision of God. When the storm has swept by, the wicked are gone, but the righteous stand firm forever because their foundation is set securely. As vinegar to the teeth and as vinegar to the teeth and smoke to the eyes, so is a sluggard to those who send him. The fear of the Lord adds length to life, but the years of the wicked are cut short. The prospect of the righteous is joy, but the hopes of the wicked come to nothing. The way of the Lord is a refuge for the righteous, but it is the ruin of those who do evil. The righteous will never be uprooted, but the wicked will not remain in the land. The mouth of the righteous bring forth wisdom, but a perverse tongue will be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is fitting, but the mouth of the wicked only what is perverse. And so hopefully you get to see uh, the tie-in with these proverbs of just laying these sayings before you, but having a direction um, in them as well. Um, the way of the righteous, the way of the wicked. The way of the righteous uh, doesn't just prosper because of wealth and, and the prosperity of this world, but rather prosper in the kingdom 
of God because it doesn't have an end. The wicked might prosper for a season as we'd see it as positive in our world today, but it will not prosper, continue on um, into life, into eternity. Um, it will be cut off. And so, again, the direction um, of Solomon and his wisdom um, is speaking towards still a father to a son, but really the makeup of a walking of faith. It is, it is important. <laughs> it is the way to be able to walk in righteousness, in the way of God, in the path of faith, rather than the wicked, the way of the world of sin. Again, contrasting this to walk in the way of righteousness, you've been called to a righteous life in the life of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And to that we say, thanks be to God. Have a blessed walk today.